Hi, my name is Daniel. I'm from the Urban Redevelopment Authority. Uh, thanks for a good talk. Uh, I just want to uh, make a few comments on what has been said uh, on the stage. Uh, first, firstly, uh, I think besides commenting on like uh, 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 actual proposals of particular buildings, I don't think I, I will comment on that. But uh, on a more philosophical uh, point of view, right? We ask ourselves, what is the point, right, of planning, right? Or what's the point of public participation. Right? One of the big things uh, that uh, the role of the planner is playing is to manage the externalities. Right? So in part if uh, for a particular plot to be built to a certain height or to a certain number of uh, dwelling units, it imposes a, an uh, outcome on the surrounding community which uh, is quite possibly the developer wouldn't take into account. That's where the planner comes in, and that is also where the community comes in to tell the planner what are the, the, the priorities, right? What are the goods that are held in common by the community which the community does not want to compromise on, right? So uh, the, the role of the planner here is to mediate, right? To kind of, to, on the one hand, to provide the technical uh, uh, know-how to the community, to enable the community to act collectively to preserve its own goods, its own common goods, right? Uh, so that the redistribution of goods among individual property owners or individual residents can be managed in an equitable way, right? So that's the role of, of uh, uh, the planner in, in this framework. And in, in Singapore too, it is like this. Right, we may not have a ULAP process, we may not have an instituted uh, uh, process to ask for community input, right? but the name of the game is still the same. The planner takes care of the common good, makes sure that the benefits are distributed equitably to the best of our ability at this point, and uh, makes, make sure that externalities are accounted for. Thank you, Daniel. So you're from URA? Yes. Oh, thank you. Glad that there are some URA people down here. Any comments on what he says? Yeah, I, I, I agree uh, with, with large portions of that. Um, I think there's sometimes there's a, there's a role of advocacy planning, which I think is what you're kind of referring to. Um, and then there's more of the technocrat, which is translating community needs into legal documents. Um, and, and community planning uh, as, a, as a community planner, I think it's trying to walk that line, and I, I think that's correct. Um, you know, starting with, with the public's input, um, sometimes they raise issues that, you know, we can't even comprehend or think of initially, um, and it's really valuable to have that in the process. And then um, I think part of the thing that we've been facing pretty recently is, is how can we be better advocates for broader policy goals where... Um, if, is anybody familiar with the NIMBY, NIMBY term, not in my backyard? SUV. You know, right, so it's, it's whose backyard then? And, and so it's trying to figure that out. And um, sometimes uh, local uh, needs um, shouldn't be overruled, should or shouldn't be overruled by the broader needs of the community, and it's, and it's balancing that. And, and I think as planners moving forward, I think we have to be better PR representatives of of what we're, what we're trying to uh, accomplish. I think as developer, when you get a plot of land, we plan uh, with the overall good of the neighborhood uh, in mind. How we wouldn't develop something that has, uh, will deteriorate the ambience or the value of the neighborhood. It affects us right deep into our feasibility. Unfortunately, in any development, there are aspects of the development, the front and the back. And the back could be your, your bin center, your, your uh, UV substation. Those are the ugly part. Nobody likes to it to be near to their, to their home. So when we start to consult the public, they all come from a very, very selfish angle. Not from the neighborhood angle. They just don't want it in front of their house. They don't mind it on somebody else's house. How do we mitigate that? If we start to have to consult each and every one and listen to each and every one, it gets into a very protracted uh, argument or 
process, it costs money. So I think there should be a balance, yeah? Unless uh, as a developer, we start to do uh, nonsensical stuff, which we don't, yeah? There are, there are also steps that already been made to prevent this thing. I went through this process called long slap block uh, uh, guideline with uh, URA. I thought it was a good exercise. It was something to make sure uh, there's some guideline that you don't uh, build a block that's so long that you blocks everybody else's view. Especially there's a very good view right in front. You don't get so greedy and you have a block that blocks out everybody else behind you. And thereby uh, you gain, the rest lose out. So there are some corridors or windows. So I think uh, if we all sit together and consult and we just uh, understand this issue is for common good, we set out some guideline, we understand what it is, and then in, in so doing, everybody so far follow that guideline. You know, of course, there will be some waivers in there if there's just borderline cases. I think these are the, the, the approach that we want to have. You know, So that's why I said just now, where were we? We are at the point in which we are consultative, we want to have that partnership. But at the same time, we are also asking for not all sides are the same. There will be sites with very unique constraint. Don't impose things that are so rigid on us that we can't move. And unless, uh, perhaps, where we can show value at, then the, the, we should have some, some dialogue and, and be able to improve on the scheme. You know? Uh, the other thing I want to say is uh, sometimes when we do all this consultative move and, 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 and dialogue with the authorities is that there is always a concern of setting precedence. Uh, there is really a concern. That gets everybody very paranoid. Nobody wants to give the first go ahead on something that is out of the norm. Uh, but sometimes to be innovative is to be getting ourselves out of precedence, especially if the precedence is not of great disadvantage. In fact, it's of value add to the neighborhood or the precinct. Then that precedence should have been set and will not be knocked down just because we do not want to set a precedent. I, I just want to uh, say this. I commend you for your, for your understanding of what a planner is supposed to do and, and, and does. Uh, I, I think that's, that was a, a, a wonderful way of someone who really understands community planning. Uh, I would add to that that you know, the planners have different roles. Sometimes planners advocate on behalf of developers, sometimes planners advocate on behalf of a community, and sometimes planners advocate on behalf of a, a, a government or the, the, the larger administration. And uh, I think you know, Alex and I are, are you know, I have a little bit more experience now in Singapore, having met your colleagues at URA and HDB, and uh, and and uh, you know we're somewhat envious and in awe of the power of URA. Sorry, William, uh, <laughs> uh, for what they're able to do. Uh, the pendulum certainly is in all the is very far over here on the government side, and and both of us here working for the government would love to have that kind of power, um, but. <laughs> But we also believe, just like you, by the way, that communities are important and need to be listened to. But I think both of us are thinking, not to put words in Alex's mouth, but certainly in mine, uh, that there is a limit. There has to be a balance between what a community wants, the NIMBY, not in my backyard, and what the larger community needs. are. Thank you, Mr. A quick one. I thought that it's, it's good to cite one good example. We did the botanic at Bartley. There was some consultation with the neighboring uh, group of people. And they came out, of course, they don't want this to be blocked, that to be blocked. And one of the main things they, they highlight, to, highlight to us is the traffic congestion that can occur if you put another 780, 797 unit into this precinct. So they asked that the egress of the development be split to two egresses, if I remember correctly. Uh, that was a positive thing. Uh, URA picked it up very quickly, went to LTA. LTA gave us based on two egress. Imagine that is helpful to us, that is helpful to the community. So sometimes taking in feedback, yes, is something where this is the planning guideline, this is how the developer design in accordance with the planning guideline. The community at touch who is, who is on the ground know that something is not going to be very pleasant if this 797 unit gets TOP'd. So they feedback. Everybody takes notice of it. Yes, it's true. Let's act on it. Let's 
move and, and change things. You know? So uh, such consultations can be useful. And it's not always uh, not in my backyard uh, syndrome all the time. 